Knights of the Old Republic is such an incredible game if you grew up playing it, but it is absolutely trash as far as like mechanics and graphic. I mean, it's just like an old, old bad. game. I mean, Hello, welcome to the Bush League Gaming Podcast, your source for ordinary opinions from ordinary gamers. Today, we are talking news ranging from Star Wars delays, Ubisoft cancellations, a rumored Black Panther game, and much, much more. I'm your host, Jacob Bush, and with me today, he stops the microwave before it beeps, leader of the Nintendites, Ryan Scalf. I do do that. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. And other people who do, do that. Yeah, I, that's really bad for the microwave. Is it? He's making that up. There's no Is way. It? Could be. Did, yeah, oh, you made it up? Know. Okay. It. Yeah, that was pretty good, though. I, uh, I, I hate that beep. And our microwave will beep forever. Like if you don't get it out, oh, that's weird. it will that's, never stop reminding that's you. That's fair then. Yeah. That's probably because you open it before it goes off. Yeah, you broke it. It's like stopping a car while you're driving. True. Yeah, exactly. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Anyways, he flosses every morning and night like a nerd. Your favorite Crip Boy, Nick Beard. I came up with that, didn't I? You did a long yeah, time ago. That's a very old one. I wish that were true. <laughs> I did it's not. I, I know. When's the last time you floss, Nick? Uh, this week actually, but I have a really tiny mouth and I have to use those picks because mm. I can't get my fingers in my you mouth. I have a small mouth. I do. It's weird. I never the dentist that. tells me every time he's like, well, that's, that's, that's trouble. That's what back. he says. Yeah. Your, your dentist is Creed. It sounds like the dentist has dentist hands in his mouth as well. It's yeah. True. Yes. <laughs> Nick is putting his fingers in the dentist's mouth. <laughs> oh. All right, guys, we're here to talk some news. Really weird. Um, at first news topic, I just want to hop right into it. EA is reportedly making a single player open world Black Panther game. Uh, this is broken by Jeff Grubb. This is a uh, classic Jeff, classic Jeff, which, you know, this I've questioned this with Jeff a few times now, but he really does break stories to the point of like completely getting the jump on the companies like. EA doesn't get announced their game. Jeff oh, announced no. their game. Yeah, it would be that. a nightmare to be announcing something and then Jeff Grubb be involved in, in any time. way. Yeah, just getting ahead of it. Like somewhat stealing the thunder. Yeah. But again, Jeff's a great guy, so I'm not going to act like it's a bad thing. He's so, the king of thunder. I'm going to read uh, directly what Jeff said on a recent uh, Giant Bomb podcast. It is a single player game. It is in very early development and the game start, starts with Black Panther being dead. The player is going to take on the challenges of becoming the new Black Panther, and that seems to be the setup for the game. Uh, it is believed that Kevin Stevens, over, who oversaw Monolith during de development of Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, and Shadow of War, will be leading this project with a new EA studio, um, potentially in Seattle. So, mm. Ryan, you've had thoughts on a, a wants for a Black Panther game it's for a long time. It's about time. time. Yeah. I want to explore Wakanda. Yeah, we were. Uh, I think we talked about this when they came out with the Marvel game, Avengers. Is that just was it Marvel Avengers? That's all Marvel's it Avengers. Yeah. yeah, it was so lame. It was like the most boring. You're like you have like some of the greatest IP in the history of the world, and you're like running around Utah underground, like the most the least interesting locations I feel like ever. And so then they were. I was griping about that. And then they announced that they were going to do a DLC with Black Panther. They did. And I was like, stop, quit, stop this game. Black Panther needs his own game because he is, I think he means enough to enough people. And he is very much a character that stands on his own. The story of Black Panther is interesting enough on its own and, um, and where he comes from. It's just like unexplored. Yeah, they haven't, you know, I know the comics have dived into it, but it just like the mass media just hasn't covered Wakanda or, you know, Black Panther, his backstory, his abilities, like all this stuff enough. You know, we, we've gotten a movie, which is which was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's like we want to explore this this world more. And um, there's just so much on the table for this, I feel like, in Wakanda specifically. Yeah, totally. And their own threats their own technologies, their own like society that that is foreign to us, but also like more advanced than us. I think that's super interesting. What are your thoughts on the aspect that you're not playing, you know, the Black Panther just died, mm. right? And there's there's been different in comics, there's different iterations yeah. of uh to Ch you know T'Challa or T'Chaka. Like there's other Black Panthers. And we're actually this is gonna be explored in Wakanda Forever, it looks like, with potentially, you know, the theory is that Shuri will become Black Panther. Um, what are your thoughts on that 
you know, the story that Jeff's talking about right now? Um, I hope it's not like a character creator. Like, yeah, like own, just your own, just a random white dude that like just happens to be in Wakanda. Because that, of Black Panther. That, that would be, be I, a bummer. I, I doubt they would go that direction. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I think you could start the game off cool. You know, I just a random white guy that finds himself in Wakanda. <laughs> I feel like cool. so pale, blonde hair, blue eyes, like yeah. the complete opposite of Black Panther. Yeah. I think it's cool. Uh, I think that it will, <clears throat> for people that do know a lot about that story and that narrative, it'll give a little twist to it and like a new, it'll give that new feeling of like, oh, hey, we're actually playing a new character and it's real because this just happened and we're like right there on the front lines as things are changing. So I think it could be cool. But I agree to your point that uh, to me, Wakanda and Black Panther have always been just like a mystery person. I don't know enough about him at all. And so I think it'd be fun. I think that there's more than enough there to create create their own games and kind of go on. Agreed. I think that was a pretty cool announcement. Um, I could see this being a series like Spider-Man. Yeah. Like very successful, uh, stands on its own, doesn't have to pull in all the other Marvel IP or anything. Just Any concerns is coming from EA or is that is that kind of a thing of the past? <laughs> I think he has been doing a lot of work to undo the wrongs. Uh, we got to give him credit. You know, when, when a company makes some missteps, we freak out. And then when they do a lot of work to undo that, I, I think we have to give some credit. And so, I mean, there's a lot still to be seen, but, you know, the whole Battlefront 2 fiasco, they unraveled that quite a bit. They've added so much to that game that no one's playing anymore. Um, but I think they they get it right. They understand, especially in times like this. It's like people aren't just throwing money at games. Even you know, since that too, since Battlefront two, they've done uh, Jedi Fallen Order, which is maybe one of the best Star Wars games ever made, Great and game. Squadron. So I think from an IP perspective, if it's anything like yeah, Jedi it, Fallen in Order. that in that article, it talked about the uh, EA senior VP Samantha Ryan, who also uh, was senior vice president of production development at Warner Bros. She talks about the success of. Uh, Jedi Fall Knight, and I think really that they're listening Fallen to Order. fans. Fall in Order, yeah, and that they're—I uh, don't know—they're going to make games like that. She talks specifically about creating experiences similar to that, and yeah. that uh, they think they have like a groove there. So yeah, I think that's uh, pretty promising. They might have learned from their mistakes with IP, and now they know how to respect it. Hopefully, and and hopefully yeah. we see that with this. So, um, speaking of Star Wars, we have some Star Wars news, but it's not good Star Wars news. So. Uh, there is a the switch and mobile game Star Wars Hunters has been delayed again. This was originally slated for 2021, then delayed to 2022. Now 2023. If you don't recall, this is the free to play squad based combat game for, for the switch iOS and Android. Um, it's I think it's maybe Zynga if I'm recalling correctly, but it's more of a mobile game. Um, but think Overwatch on mobile with Star Wars characters that you haven't heard of between Return of the Jedi and episode seven. Uh, I actually was a little excited about Overwatch? this. Overwatch? Is yeah, that the a, format of the game? It's a squad-based arena shooter. Yeah. Which is what Overwatch mm -hmm. is. So. I was expecting more of like a galaxy of heroes. No, no. This was a, like a shoot, like a, I think it was maybe third person, but it's, it was a squad-based. Kind of like top down. You have version. your roles. Okay. Yeah. You have your roles where you're actually doing different things with different characters. So kind of like a League of Legends. Uh, not exactly. No, no, no. It's more like Overwatch. League of Legends is interesting is more i think moba so yeah, i don't know yeah, nick yeah. you're i want to throw it to you first you the mobile guy were you excited about this originally and then if you were what are your thoughts on this delay i was excited i actually signed up for the beta and didn't get i did too to it. Yeah. yeah i did too i was excited just because it was going to be on mobile i didn't know about the beta thanks for yeah. sending that invite to me you have this like disposition against mobile games yeah where i'm just like it's not even worth disposition bringing. that's that's pretty lightly that's true. It's like well, I know it won't hatred. be a great game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If this game is being developed for mobile, I'm 100% confident it's not going to be an incredible game. Oh, see, that's that's Ooh. why I don't send that stuff to you. That's yeah. so, that's a that's a wrong outlook. It's going to be on Switch too, though. If you said that six years ago. Switch has a I, lot of horrible if games. If you said that like six years ago, I'd be like, yeah, maybe. But their mobile games are becoming high, much higher quality. I'll probably change my tune in 2030. Good. Can't wait for That's it. That's what it'll take. Anyways, Nick, you were saying you sent up for the beta. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I was excited. Uh, not not much more than that. I thought, oh, cool, a new Star Wars game on mobile. It's also going to be on other platforms. It might be good. And I'm even more excited now just because we have the backbone and things like that. So, yeah. Which, by the way, the backbone is incredible. 
fully endorsed by Bush Lee County. Fully endorsed. Not sponsored. We all use it. Held off for Get it. quite a while. Recently got one. And uh, you're welcome. Yes. That's the type of mobile I think that could put the switch under. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of games I would rather play on my phone than the switch right now. Yeah. And uh, the background makes it easy and it's beautiful. It's a great product. The yeah. actual hardware, the actual device, but also the app, uh, everything. They just make it completely fun. So I'm even more excited about games like this now. And we'll see. Maybe delays are good. We we saw what happens when you don't delay games that are needed to be delayed with Cyberpunk. And uh, we still haven't played it. So I'm sure that just wouldn't have happened if it came out at the right time. So Yeah, I'm never going to be a person who has a problem with the delay if it means that it'll just be a better game. Like, why yeah. why, why want a game earlier if it's going to be worse? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Sir, you can't Sir. play that game right now that you had planned on playing, but you can choose from 17,000 other games until that game comes out. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, it, it seems like... It's not that big a deal. It seems like once a game comes out, all of the negativity about the delays just melts away. Gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't undo a bad launch. That's just, that's like and honestly, a death yeah. sentence. Yeah. Honestly, a lot of them are due to crunch time and things like that. So totally. studios are saying, look, we just saw what happened with Cyberpunk. Um, it's making us be a little bit more conscious and aware of our employees. Yeah. And we're going to make sure that we respect that. So uh, Sea of Stars just did the same thing. Delayed. Delayed until 2023, which was a game I've been looking for. It was the game I told you 2021. I was the most excited to play in 2022. Yep. So I'll, um, I'll live. On the note of delays, another Star Wars announcement. And this isn't exactly a delay. This is more of a pause, which might be worse. So oh man, the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake has reportedly been delayed indefinitely. This comes from Jason Schreier at Bloomberg uh, and quotes this, this out. I couldn't read the full article because it's Bloomberg and they have a paywall, but I pulled from uh, VGC for some of this. So uh, VGC said development of the Star Wars Knights of the Republic remake has reportedly been paused with the future of the game said to be up in the air. Jason claims developer Aspire Media fired the game's director, design director, Brad Prince and art director, Jason Miner earlier this month after the studio finalized the demo of the game to show to its production partners, Lucasfilm and Sony. So in summary here, guys, they showed a a vertical slice of the game and Sony and Lucasfilm didn't like it to the point where this might not get made now. I knew this was too good to be true. I knew it. Do you remember me saying that? You did. And you, Jacob is going to dig through all of our old podcasts to find me saying that. And then he'll, he'll splice that in right here. I won't right now. Okay. We're back. I'm not. So that was me predicting that this was going to, it was too good to be true. I knew it because Knights of the Old Republic is such an incredible game if you grew up playing it, but it is absolutely trash as far as like mechanics and graphics. I mean, it's just like an old, old game. I mean, if you go back now and look at it, when you were playing Xbox and we didn't know any better, it was the greatest thing we'd ever seen. So I was like, this isn't just like you put a new, you know, coat of paint on it you're gonna have to completely remake this game so they're making it's like the developers are gonna have to have knights of the old republic pulled up and then like shot for shot recreate everything with like much more updated graphics and features and all sorts of things and make the combat more interesting and dynamic because the combat was not great and that's the old republic you know it's true you don't want to admit it so yeah and i wouldn't go as far as calling it trash it's just a it's a game it's an rpg but like a true rpg where sure uh, when i say trash i mean like it's so well it's it's only trash when you compare it to today well but also when you think rpg you think where you're actually swinging that sword and right right the big difference here with at this time and a lot of games of this era is that you were more sending commands and like okay now do this and that still happens on a lot of like online um like world of warcraft yeah yeah Yeah, so you're clicking so I, I immediately thought of you, Ryan, when I saw this delay, because I'm like, Ryan was so skeptical of this because he he didn't think that they could do it right. And this format can't hold up today. Like they had to update the battles. And I knew yeah. that that's, that's a, a no, no disrespect to the, the studios working on this. I just know that that's an insane amount of work that might not sell super well. Because there's like people like us that are obsessed with this game and there's a lot of people who never played it or they would maybe be put off by how the old format was. I, 
Well, they mentioned that. They mentioned that they pretty much had to do this game from scratch. It was a remake, yeah. And that uh, they let go of two really important people on the project. Didn't, didn't say why, but it was the art director and one of the main people running it. And then also that the studio wasn't uh, thrilled with where the performance was. So it seems like there were just some issues going on here, but they mentioned that this was going to be a multi-year project, been working on it for years already, and that they pretty much had to recreate the game from scratch. I was like word for word. Well, no, it, it, one I of mean, the things it, I read. this is a ground up remake. Like it's, so one thing to note here is that this is, was being developed by Aspire. Aspire was, you know, last year bought by Embracer Group, but Aspire, their track record are ports and remasters, not remakes. And that's like super significant to the story because, mm-hmm. you know, being a remake or a port group is a lot different than a re I'm sorry, a remaster or a port group is a lot different than a remake because think about the remakes that have got, like gone really well. Tony Hawk pro skater, um, the last of us is happening right now. It looks good. These uh, resident evil, these ground up remakes are just new games. Like you can't even like, they're not using it as the old game is necessarily even a template where it's shot for shot. This is, they're shooting for a new product here with the same essence of the original game. Yeah. And Aspire has never done that. And for something like star Wars working with Lucasfilm and then also Sony as a partner, the bar is super high for this. Yeah. So I think they were kind of got in over their head from the get go as, right. as Aspire. Um, so I think the, the idea of like a, uh remaster you're making a remaster for the people who grew up playing that game right so you're it's just making it a little bit more palatable yeah when you look at it yes. that's all it is and so the people that are buying that game are typically just the people who loved it growing up and you too and there's money to be made there when you're making a remake you're trying to not only scratch that itch of people who grew up playing this game but you're trying to introduce this to the new generation of gamers um, because you believe that this game can hold up, and I don't know that this game can. So when you when you go about remaking a game like this, and it's hard to explain if if you can't you just look up like a YouTube video of the combat in Nice of the Old Republic too, if you haven't. I don't, ha- I don't hate it. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. But a lot of people. It hate just it. Yeah. doesn't like it. Doesn't hold up compared to a lot of games that are out that you can be playing. And so I don't know that there's a ton of money to be made here. And I'm saying that as a huge fan so, of this game. Like I, I. This is an absolute yes. dream that they would make a remake of this. What, what, I just know it's it's so it's a long road. What it's, holds up is the story, and right. So yes. what at, you know, growing up playing this game at launch, the story was amazing. That was that was one of the biggest aspects of this. Exactly. But also the feeling of I can just go to a planet and do missions here, and go to right. do missions here. That was one of the biggest parts of this, and now that's like not a novelty anymore. It's common. It's common. So I do yeah. think that like. Don't stick like go back to this era because this era is rich for storytelling. Oh my gosh! But maybe we don't have to like do a remake, but you can do a Knights of the Old Republic story without doing a full blown going back to the well on this specific. Game. I couldn't believe Disney was okay with this because it's True. not canon, right? And and Disney has been pretty ruthless in eliminating anything that's not canon. Yeah. And they have that system of like, oh, this is legend now, so it may or may not be true. They can pull from it if they want. But this is a a massive story like Jacob's saying and it has a ton of implications for everything we've seen that's actually canon it just it tells a story that i think is is foundational to star wars and so that's why a lot of people grew up loving it because it's this really mm-hmm. complex relationship between the sith and the jedi long long ago and one of the greatest years. greatest jedi slash sith that's ever maybe my favorite Revan. story so yeah. I don't know. This is a big loss. It's a huge loss, in my opinion, if this isn't going to. Yeah. If this isn't going to come about. So, all right, guys, let's move on to some Ubisoft news. And I kind of be wanna... playing. Gosh, we do I need a UB forward it. soon, don't we? We have. Oh, there's UB forward in September, I think. Yeah. Um, so I kind of want to gloss over a lot of this. The core here is that a lot of negative stuff was announced in the last week or two for Ubisoft. So first of which is Ubisoft has canceled Ghost Recon Frontlines, Splinter Cell VR, and two unannounced games. Um, I was super excited about those two unannounced games, guys. Uh, Ghost Recon Frontline was a battle royale game that- <laughs> You sucked. didn't even have to announce that. Yeah, why? <laughs> why <laughs> if it, they were unannounced, why are you announcing they were canceled? Just well, so you I, know, we had two really good games in the whole I think it was a leak. They didn't, Ubisoft uh, didn't announce they were canceling two. I don't think they did. Um, that is hilarious. So- 
Uh, Ghost Recon Frontline was a battle royale game that saw groups of four players teaming up to face more than 100 players across a large map. The game's uh, announcement was met with significant backlash, which caused Ubisoft to delay and eventually cancel a planned playtest. The Splinter Cell game was planned in collaboration with Meta and would have been an exclusive to Meta headsets. Those two things were canceled. Um, in addition Sick. to that, Ubisoft has delayed Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. The title was originally planned to release closer to James Cameron's Avatar, The Way of Water, which is currently scheduled to hit cinemas on December 16th, 2022. It will now arrive during the company's fiscal year beginning April 2023. So they wanted to do that whole classic lining up a game with a with a movie. It's not going to work out. Final uh, announcement. Uh, Ubisoft has announced has denied claims it's planning to cancel Roller Champions. Uh, once again, coming from Jeff Grubb, Jeff Grubb, uh, I think, <laughs> announced that he heard from a source that Roller Champions was going to be canceled after season three. But in a statement released by Ubisoft, they denied it was planning to cancel the game, which was just released in May. Um, and Ubisoft goes on to respond and say that in its quarterly financial results published last week, Ubisoft said Roller Champions was performing better than Hyperscape. It's now canceled free to play Battle Royale. I wanted to Performing highlight Performing better than it's canceled game. <laughs> I wanted, wow. I wanted to highlight Incredible. that because it's like, you know, this terrible thing we're using as a metric of its success. It's not like, yeah, it did good like Assassin's Creed or Far Cry. No, it's this thing that's canceled now. So guys, in general, I said a lot just now. They're a mess. What's going on with Ubisoft right now? Yeah. Is, is this a mess? Man, they were, things were so good at Ubisoft for so long. And I, I feel like this latest Assassin's Creed, although I'm sure it's fun. Uh, I love Assassin's Creed. People were not jumping in on this from what I could tell. And that, I mean, that was a year ago. Valhalla? Valhalla. It's almost two, Actually, years, two ago. years We ago. didn't yeah. jump into it. A year and a half. Uh, and that was sort of the beginning of the slowdown. I feel like everything they've released since then have ha has had like very mediocre launch. Even um, Dog... Uh, the one that he likes. Oh, Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs. Yeah, yeah. That, that was received kind of poorly too. Yeah, all of their like, they, and they put a ton of money <laughs> in working these games. They, and they were, they were cranking them out every year. Same sort of issue of like Call of Duty with Activision. It was like, you do hit a point where like, you're not going to make more money every year, right? There is like a threshold there. And so I think they're reevaluating um, a lot of their things. There's like Phoenix Rising. A lot of those games like, People are a little bit tired of their open world models. Just retooling, yeah. yeah. There's a rumored yeah. spinoff of Phoenix Rising, by the way. Just a note there. I'm sure there is. Anyway, to give you an idea of where I stand with Ubisoft, when we were playing Elden Ring, someone made a hilarious like meme, and it was like, if Elden Ring was a Ubisoft game, and it shows just a screenshot of the Elden Ring world, and there's waypoints just like flashing all <laughs> over the map. There's a compass with like 50 things on the compass and uh, your character's standing there and there's a little dialogue. It's like, hmm, I wonder if I should check that cave, like obvious hints of where to go. And it gave me anxiety. I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I can't believe I played games like that. Like there's yeah. just, it's just overload. It's just too much. and. I'm maybe not speaking for everyone that plays Ubisoft games because I know that there's diehards that love Assassin's Creed. It's great. Um, I think they just need to rethink a lot of what they've become. You know, when when Elden Ring comes out and it's so successful and they have like no budget for actual UI, UX, like it's it looks like an old PC game. Like it looked atrocious as far as menus go. Yeah. And yeah. Ubisoft probably spins like, 30% of their budget on just their menus. It's like something's wrong, right? People don't need that. And so I think maybe from top down, they're realizing, okay, we don't have to make a battle royale to just appease, you know, every 13 year old in the world. We don't have to make like a splinter cell VR. People just love splinter cell. So maybe we make something. I don't know if they're going to eventually make a different splinter cell. They're working on VR. They're, they're working on one right now. Great. <laughs> All I'm saying is like, I think they they were launching this like huge net to gather every corner of like the gaming sphere. And I think they're realizing, oh, like Elden Ring didn't have to do that. Like we have interesting enough IP on its own. Why don't we just focus on making these games really good and maybe toning back the, uh, the open world fatigue a little bit and just doing what people love that we do, you know, why we got popular.
Yeah. Yeah, I think it's similar to Call of Duty in that they're taking a year off. They're taking a break this year after War for Two. It's the first time they've ever done it. I don't think you can put out big Assassin Creed games every year or every 18 months and have them be great games. You're just taking the assets, the maps, you're retooling everything and like adding a new story. And I feel like every Assassin's Creed, this may be hot take, every Assassin's Creed has been a little bit less better than the previous one, in my opinion, um, with the exception of Black Flag maybe. But I feel like they've been trying to get back to that original amazing story. And uh, it's just like the same thing over and over again. Um, and that doesn't even talk about like dark design and just making people feel like horrible humans for not checking off every waypoint. But it, I just think it's really tough to put out a game like that every year and then think that that's just going to be this consistent, like great experience. It, it's funny that you you have that impression because they're they used to do every year and they have since the last three releases, they've done every two, two years. years yeah. Oh, wow. But the fact that you doesn't even feel like that. I was gonna say the fact that you have the impression tells you something because I do think there's something to a um, serialized releases where it's you don't miss it. Like with Splinter Cell, we're itching for it. We want to we want to play it because we haven't had one in like ten years. Yeah. But with Assassin's Creed and there's certain properties that do it. It's like Diablo, <clears throat> another one. Oh, well, Diablo is taking eight, ten years too. Though. Yeah. So well, that, that's oh, yeah, another one. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So like I think there's. It's not their original thing. They did pull back from an annual release because people were complaining that they're too often. They're not buying them as much, but even maybe further, I think it's what I'm seeing with Ubisoft across the board is a lack of innovation and yeah. they used to innovate. They used to absolutely, they, they set the, the model for like, you know, way, um, you know, clearing an outpost was, was somewhat popularized by Far Cry. Far Cry three was a innovative game. Assassin's Creed one through two or brotherhood were Black Flag. innovative games. Black flag was innovative. I, I skipped three cause I didn't think three oh, did much. Yeah. Um, they used to innovate these properties and now they're just kind of coasting yeah. off of those. They're big IPs. using other people's innovations, you know, VR they're doing battle Royale. I mean, they're yeah, that feels exactly like I did right. this great game. Great game three. And it's not. And I want to be like the same. Thing. I want to be clear because I'm. I'm currently playing Far Cry Five. I'm almost. I'm about to beat it. Actually, I told you guys this. That's I'm right. having a great time, and like you said, it's a plateau. It's not like they're nose diving, no. but they're just kind of up here in a nebulous state of what are you guys doing yeah. next? Because you can't sit here for too long as a company. Yeah. Um, you've tr they've tried to innovate. Actually, Roller Champions. I'll give them credit. That's a very weird thing to make. <laughs> um, Phoenix Rising. They're using very Assassin's they Creed They made that model. dodgeball game? They made the dodge... Yeah. Did they make the dodgeball game? I don't think they made the dodgeball game. I don't think they made the Hard dodgeball game. game. Okay. Um, do a let's play on roller it, skates. But then they... So they made Hyper... Totally roller skate. I talked about that. I should I, make a roller skate. Check it. episode. Dude. No, no. I just made that up. I right downloaded now. the game to play it so we could do that. Anyways, my point being, Ubisoft is in a... I think they're at a big turning point for them as a company. They've been trying to sell to whoever will buy them. I don't know if we talked about that briefly. Yeah. You were talking about them putting on their best outfit to get bought. Yeah. They are in a really bad spot in my opinion. And I'm not saying they make bad games even. I just think they're not innovating anymore. And when you're not innovating, you're dying. So they've been tempting Microsoft. I, I feel like they so badly wanted to be Activision when Activision was bought. <laughs> and they were like, they're putting on their lipstick and just doing everything yeah. they can to look pretty. And oh, it's just painful to watch. It says that they reported a net income of 79 million euros down from uh, 105 the year before. Ooh. That's 2021 through 2022. They haven't really released much, I feel like. Uh, this, yeah, they're skating 21, off Valhalla. 22. I mean, they released Far Cry 6, which is a big oh, IP for them. Oh, I totally forgot about Which, that. Which, by the way, after playing Far Cry 5 and really enjoying it, I'm, I'm going to get Far Cry 6 whenever it's on Game Pass a shot. Juan Carlo. Juan Carlo. Yep. Guys, anything else on Ubisoft before we move on? You'd be playing. You'd be hating, actually. I think you'd be hating. Change. You'd be hating. Yeah, I'd be hating. You, you're in a bad spot with Ubisoft. You won't even like give them the time of day. They're just better than what they've been putting out. I grew up playing all of their games. You're so in a I'm bad like, spot with them. You guys have a very bad <laughs> relationship. I have, like, right I have short patience. I need to reach out. <laughs> not not an email. about this Ubisoft. <laughs> not an email. I have short patience for like companies that I've watched like just at their highest highs and then their lowest lows and that they, they like coast uh <laughs> nintendo 
Um, <laughs> yeah, prime offender. Yeah, so it, it it's hard for me to like not be critical, but I I love their work. I love yeah. their IPs. Okay. All right, guys, let's get into something we are excited about that I think is innovating. We have some multiverses new. So multiverses, if you don't know, is Warner Brothers, you know, big action platform fighter. It's stupid good. It's stupid There's good. There's no, they have no business making such a good fighter it, game. It's like Smash, but with Warner Brothers characters. So think like Bugs Bunny fighting. Uh, first thing that came to Tom mind was Jerry. LeBron James, which okay. is, yeah. And can I, can we, can we talk about that? Tom and Jerry? LeBron James. Yeah, it's, LeBron it's James. in the news here. Yeah. yeah. LeBron James. What were you going to say? You guys seen that Vine? LeBron James. Yeah, well, I have. It it's was incredible. Like, no. It that's is. one of the greatest videos of all time. It is. Let's get on. Go look up just literally LeBron James Vine. It's amazing. Anyway, um, I don't know if you guys feel this. I feel like Multiverses takes fighting more serious than Smash. Yeah. Smash has an, Smash is balanced. Smash is a great game. I, I have played every iteration of Smash, and I'm obsessed. So this isn't a critique on Smash. I just think multiverses, they were like, hey, we can go after this, but we have to be different and enough. And the way that we're going to do that is probably more experimental yes. and serious combat. Um, I just feel like there's a lot more variation in movesets. Yeah. Everything from their air attacks to their the navigation of like every time you get two jumps, two dodges and two attacks in the air. So you can, if you're good enough, you can suspend yourself for a very long time and your air attacks are actually super powerful for most characters. So it's just like little things like that, that um, it's definitely harder to kill a character yeah. or your your opponent. So um, the, the flight distances are not quite as dramatic. Mm -hmm. So you really have to put in work to get a kill. And, and I kind of love that. Yeah. I do too. Okay, so coming back to the news real quick, um, I want to circle back to kind of right, the quality. Right, there's of stuff to talk about. Sure. So <laughs> the game had reached a peak in current player count of 144,000 on Steam uh, at the time. Apex Legends was at 118,000. Uh, Dota was 454, a higher 268 was Lost Ark. But the big thing here is that in contrast to its previous releases, this almost doubled uh, their not their top, but their second their second one. So their second best performing game on Steam was Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga at 82,000 concurrent users. Again, we're talking about they reached a peak of 144. And if you go down from there, we're dropping off to 65. And that's a beta. Blood. That's a beta. Uh, granted, this is a free to play game, but at the same time, this is showing that, you know, this is just Steam specifically. You know, it's doing great on consoles too, but there is an itch for the Smash Life Fighter on other platforms, right? Nintendo has dominated this space because no one else has really put out a quality no product. No one's tried. Brawlhalla has been there. Uh, the Nintendo, Nintendo or, one. No, no, no. Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon yeah, All-Stars. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nintendo. Nickelodeon All-Stars. Like these games have tried to get into the space on other platforms, but we've talked about it, I think, before where... Nintendo just has it locked down. If someone else comes in and tries to compete, they're going to do well just because yeah. there's an itching for it. So like, I think this is a great sign for the game. Like Ryan's saying, it's a quality product. Oh, yeah. And I didn't realize how much IP Warner Brothers owns. So much. Like if you asked me, I'd be like, yeah, it's probably a ton. I didn't but know they owned LeBron James either. <laughs> they own <laughs> LeBron James. Know. It's incredible. They keep him like locked in this basement and they just record his movement and then put it in the game. It's and crazy. then they let him out for, for Wait, season, season, competition, yeah, yeah, yeah. NBA season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, so no, the reason, and for, if you don't really connect the dots here, the reason he's in it is because he's in Looney Tunes uh, Space Jam. So, which his skin is awesome. It's a space which, jam skin. Yeah, yeah, I didn't connect those dots because I'm confused? thinking his about skin Michael in Jordan. the game, like the like LeBron James. I mean, his Michael skin Jordan in real too. life is great too. He's got great complexion, but I'm saying like <laughs> the Looney Tunes skin in the game. Yes. Yeah. Just yes. wanted to clarify that because it sounded weird. It did yeah. sound weird. And next, we're going to talk about skincare, <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by for your complexion. Oh, I can't even think of one. Um, you know, I've never used a skincare anything. That surprised me with your wife. You've who's got, like, you've got really, she's nice. a master of skincare. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Her skin is great because she puts some serious work into it, but I've never done. I'm afraid that I'm going to mess up my natural biome. What What about, did you ever like, <laughs> you, know, you have, if I like blast everything on my face, acne growing up? No, no. Okay. Yeah. See, I, I, I dabbled in some, is it, pro, uh, Proactive, proactive. proactive. I, yeah. I, I dabbled in some proactive because I had some like nice little acne sure. on the smell of side proactive here. takes me back to uh, you used it too? summer camp, seventh grade. You used it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Just instant smell. Anyways, where, where you and I first met. That's yeah. around the <laughs> proactive. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. I still want to touch on a few more things with multiverses. Um, multiverses announced, obviously, Bron James just came out. He came out this past uh, week. 
They announced that Rick and Morty are on their way. They're coming out during season one, which oh, is launching in so August. Awesome. They're going to be so good. They're saying that it's going to be very portal based. So again, oh, that's unique be systems. So sick. That's the thing. Are there separate characters, right? They're separate characters. Okay, good. Yeah. It sounds like um, Morty's going to come first before Rick. So they'll be. They're going to use their portal gun as the big thing here. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. He's a child. <laughs> he's a child. <laughs> Nick, do you have anything? Th- any thoughts on this beyond what we've already said? There's uh, just the list of upcoming people that they have on here too. Go ahead and yeah, go ahead and uh, uh, don't read the whole list, but anything stand out to you? So <laughs> I'll, I'll give some context. So recently, Chris Scullion at VGC wrote about. Um, there are 30 character to- tokens that you can buy for multiverses. It's a free to play game, but you can buy character tokens because you have to unlock characters in the game. If you want to skip that, buy these tokens. There's a premium edition. There are only 19 characters officially announced. So when you have something like 30 tickets, clearly something's on the way. So, um, a recent- although, go ahead. Although, um, go ahead. Not all of your characters are already unlocked. Nin- so, so, yeah. Uh, how many characters are 19? 19, 19 is the total. Uh, unlocked and locked. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, oh, I factored that in. So yeah, oh, you know. Good math, Jacob. Thank you. I'm sorry, that. I doubted you. You know, just running a podcast here for two years. You so. really you're, think you're Jacob would bring a um, dirty cucumber? <laughs> never bring a dirty cucumber. <laughs> Please go um, watch our Let's Play where Jacob makes me eat a uh, dirty cucumber. It's not dirty. It's a clean cucumber. I promise it's a clean cucumber. So um, data miners have found a lot of information in the code. Again, they know that they're looking for stuff now where there's voice lines, there's voice lines referencing other characters, there's assets. So they found a lot of information. Nick, uh, you know, who are, who are you excited? I don't want to read this whole list. It's a huge list. Anyone stand out to you that you're excited about? Uh, I can read the whole list. Joker. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> Joker might be fun. Johnny Bravo, Samurai yeah. Jack, Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. So he's uh, just reading the whole list now. Ted Lasso. <laughs> Ted Lasso. I, that's a confusing one. Yeah. I, I'm not I, I'm not thrilled about that one. I yeah. like as much as I love Ted Lasso, like, I'm hey, not like you? super excited. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be dumb if he's like kicking a soccer ball because he doesn't play soccer. What's he gonna do? Coach? He's gonna call in Roy Kent, who just tackles curses okay. at someone. Yeah. Roy yeah. Kent, I would play as Roy Kent. Yeah. He yeah. would wreck oh they should have just done Roy Kent. Yeah, he would have yeah. wrecked these people. Yeah, but if he comes Head in with butt. a whistle and a visor and has a soccer ball and we know he can't play and he kicks it and hits people, Nick, that'd be funny. Speaking of which, so another thing with multiverse is that it's actually it has an a uh a squad based mechanic or team based mechanic where it's more you actually are you have roles. So like there's a support class, there's a you know a brawler class. Well, as a support class, you can boost your teammates with buffs. So like you just said, you blow a whistle and you know maybe your teammate in your vicinity now has higher attack power or whatever. So maybe he's more of a support character that boosts his teammate. That's like a, a, I didn't like even think a coach. That. Like a coach. Oh my Whoa. gosh. Whoa. Support. Ryan, I'm so, 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 much so meta. meta. Anyone stand out to you, Ryan? Um, ben 10. Are you? How old are you? This is hilarious. I knew you guys From were going to respond. Adventure Time to Ben 10. I'm a little older, a little younger than them. Uh, so like Ben 10, 10 came on TV when I was about, you know, 18. So I was totally <laughs> No, it's... Uh, I don't know who that is. You don't know who Ben 10 is? It was a Cartoon Network sh- show. Obviously, everyone knows this besides Jacob and Nick. But he has this, like, alien watch, basically, that he can turn into... 10 different alien races mm. and so he, oh, he gains like the abilities of all these that. aliens and it dude jacob. it was it was a great of him. it's jacob. a great character i think for a game like this it's kind of like uh it'll be like pokemon trainer i think you have this variation in the type of aliens you can be i'm sure um the other one is like the game of thrones characters daenerys and the hound yeah that's yeah, gonna that's be amazing gonna be cool. they're like the fire emblem of this game right sword characters yes. that are kind of like dark and edgy Nick, will you look up what year Ben 10 came out for me? I just have to know real quick. Um, so one thing that stood out to me that I, I'm actually not seeing, I, I found a different list of leaks, actually. Robin is a leaked character, which makes sense. 2006. I was in sixth grade. I was driving. <laughs> I was driving when Ben in 10 In 2006, came you were driving? I was 16, yeah. You know what's pretty cool? <laughs> <laughs> I was a child. I didn't realize. I was a child. Um, <laughs> I know... Like, if you tell me a year, I know what grade I was in because I was in whatever year it was. That was the number grade I was in. So 2006, I was sixth grade. See, I can do a similar thing where it's like, just add 10 years to that, those last two numbers. So 2006, add 10 years, I was 16. I had literally dropped out of high school. 1990. If you're born in 1990, I can do that for the rest of my life. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, because my thing ended because I'm no longer in school. Yeah, you, so you're yours done. Goes I'm, on I'm set for life. Yeah. So then, if I just subtract uh, f- four from whatever yours is, that would work. Then too. it would be my. That would work too. Yeah. Cool. I'll Anyways. remember that. So add ten, subtract. Five. I think the big takeaway here is how much younger Ryan is than us. I did. I didn't. I didn't realize. Great convo, guys. Ben ten. Anything else, Nick? About I was this? No. Sixth no. grade, and you were driving. Yeah. Yeah. You could have been driving me to school. I could have. Your Actually, brother, brother was driving yeah, to school. Brother, yeah, I'm the same age as your brother. So um, one thing here, again, Ryan mentioned this or Nick might have, but go watch the multiverses. Let's play. It's maybe it's the, so the best Bush League content I think we've put out to, to date. So yeah. um, more Let's Play content's coming, but multiverses is, is a phenomenal game. The free to play open beta is now open to everybody. We were playing in closed beta, but we'll it's probably not open. do some more as characters come out. Absolutely. So check that out. Um, our last news topic today is regarding GTA six. This is somewhat big news. Um, the article comes from Jason Schreier at Bloomberg, and the title is Rockstar Games Cleaned Up Its Frat Boy Culture and Grand Theft Auto 2. So in summary, there's a lot that goes into that article regarding the culture shift at Rockstar. I recommend you actually reading that. I did read it. It's interesting. I kind of want to focus on the exciting stuff that came. Obviously, a culture shift's great for everybody, right? If the, if the uh, developers are happy, usually they're making a better product. We're happy, but I want to focus on the details about the actual GTA six game that's coming up. So, um, the big highlights that came out of this article from Jason, there's going to be a female protagonist, um, influenced by Bonnie and Clyde. So it sounds like, like rocks, uh, what is it? Grand Theft Auto four, or I'm sorry, five, you played as three characters and you shifted between all three of them. It sounds like they're theorizing that you'd be playing as these two characters, a female lead and then a male lead, kind of the Bonnie and Clyde classic story. So Hmm. that seems interesting to me. Um, Early map was supposed to be North and South America with the regions. You would be like traveling between the regions, but hasn't been since reduced to just Miami and the surrounding areas. It's not. It's a big reduction. It's a big. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, let's go from two, like a, you know, two continents to um, maybe like one of the sub best cities in america so at least from a game perspective uh vice city was a great game that's a fun city to play in they're going back to vice city likely but to your point ryan and nick they really cut it back because they're part of this culture shift is they're trying to reduce crunch and rockstar is notorious for insane crunch between red dead games grand theft auto games they were working seven day work weeks 14 hour days that's been reported for years They want to shift away from that. So what they're doing is they're narrowing the scope up front, building a good base, but they're planning on creating kind of like a a living game where they're adding more missions as time goes on and they are adding more cities even. And that's the significance here is that they're talking about once this game comes out, it's not just that city. They're going to release more cities. City as a DLC. That'd be fun. Or a continent as a DLC. I'm surprised they hadn't already thought of that with GTA 5. Dude, they've been so focused on GTA Online that they make so much money with just creating missions and different buildings in the game. And who am I to tell them to do something different? Yeah, they make so much money. Very true. That's a third best selling game of all time. I think they made like six billion dollars. Yeah, six billion dollars on one video game. I that's unbelievable. But uh, like you said, as a uh, you're saying, they should have just done that with GTA Five. Did he nail the number? Six billion. Nice, right? To date, this game has earned over six billion. I, I do think from a consumer perspective, this is super exciting to me because I, I loved GTA five. I played it. I played it through twice. I played online for a good amount. This is all before, you know, this is back when it came out and I felt like the offering they didn't offer what I wanted. I wanted another city. I want a DLC, like you're saying. And if they are setting this up to be another 10 year, 15 year game where they just update and add content to I'm in like, I, I like that model for these types of games and it's not even like paid DLC, right? They u- usually release this as free updates now because you're more buying skins or currency or whatever for that world. So I think that a lot was kind of revealed here. This is all like brand new knowledge and it has me more excited than ever for GTA six. Hmm. Yeah. Not me. Tell me about it. I've loved the games. I'm just nervous to go back and play play any new ones. I don't know. Kind of want to leave that as like a nostalgic. Did you like five? Uh, I didn't even play five. Oh, you... So I also skipped five, which I know is just mind boggling because I've played every. I played every Grand Theft Auto. I guess I didn't play Grand Theft Auto one. Who who played Grand Theft Auto one? Did you play Grand Theft Auto two? 
I don't even know. No, no I played the play first two. two. So I played three through, you know, San Andreas, Vice City, all, you know, and all their four. DLCs. There was um, four had the best DLC. Ballad of Gay Tony. Ballad uh, of Gay Tony was so good. The yeah. uh, motorbike gang one. Oh, oh gosh, I can't believe I, I don't remember any of that. Anyways. Yeah, I played all that. Um, and then I didn't play five. I yeah, probably was feeling what Nick was feeling. Where I was just like, man, I feel like I've gotten so much out of those games and I have other stuff I want to play, so I'll get to it and uh, never got to it. So six, I will be jumping in, I'm sure. I'll probably end up buying five. <laughs> yeah, I've got Add to that to six say billion. I was going to say, when people are like, how is this still at the top of the charts? It's because of people like you who still haven't played GTA 5. Somehow you just bought it one week randomly. And yeah, I can't believe I haven't played it. Well, they said for GTA, years have been saying I'll buy it. They say GTA Online brings in 800 million annually. Yeah, why make a new game? Oh. Why why add DLC when you don't have to? There's why are they making a Grand Theft Auto Six? So it's actually they've consolidated all their teams to Grand Theft Auto Six. They had other projects going on, and they kind of um, narrowed it down As just to GTA Six. Yeah. yeah, and not even finished. They've scrapped projects. Oh, really? To put them on GTA Six, so they're putting all their eggs in this basket, which is again, it'll I think pay off. It'll pay off. Yeah, oh my I mean, gosh, they it's, seem it's just unbelievable how much money this Rockstar makes. So is there any chance you guys will go play GTA 5 or is that you're just going to wait yeah, for 6? You'll play 6. It'll like. probably go on sale for $40. I think it's on Game Pass. <laughs> on sale it, it's, it's on streaming service. I mean, it's on. No, so, it's not on Game Pass. It was on It was on subscription services at one point. Yeah, it was. It might be on PlayStation Plus right now with the new tiers. Well, I'll I'll probably end up. I might actually own it. You I probably bought I get it to you years ago. ago. Yeah. Nick, anything else? <laughs> no. All right. Uh, estimated release date is some people say 2023. Some people say 2024. Some people say 2025. There's no really ballpark. Again, with them releasing it as a live game, they could release it a lot sooner, release more stuff as time goes on. But really, we don't have an idea of release date. Hmm. That's it for news this week, guys. Um, I think we should get into a new section called. What's it called? I was going to call it just devlog. 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 Um, yeah. Would one of you like to explain what this section is? Yeah, Ryan, kick this off. Yeah, let me start by inviting Nick to kind of tell our story. So Rockstar is hiring for about 250 roles. So I think they're I think they're doing good and yeah, growing, yeah, yeah. by the way. Just thought I'd bring that up. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to pass it back to Ryan. Ryan's going to open us up here and talk about all the devlog stuff. Okay, thanks for that. I'll, uh, I got you, man. Yeah, I'll dive in. Um, so Nick would best describe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, okay. I'm going to let you guys go back and forth. Nick, here. Uh, yeah, you could. We could go you for a long time. Scorch me if you want. Uh, Nick and I have been working on a game, and that's that's not news because we've we've brought that up on the show before. But um, as we kind of like unfold things and learn new things, we, we thought it'd be cool to check in um, with our studio called uh, Fight Milk. Oh, you're announcing the studio name. Oh, geez, that's our uh, working title. Is called Fight Milk. Um, <laughs> Which we just, I think, is hilarious. Obviously, a, a bit of a ripoff of um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Also, not the European uh, punk band either. Yeah, yeah, not them. Definitely not them. Nice. Um, yeah, so we got a few projects we've been working on. Um, right now, It Nick and I are going into this knowing nothing about really code or making a game. And so we've been taking classes. Um, I've, I've worked on... A few different code languages, C++ was something I was doing. We were, I started working in Unity. Now we're moving into Unreal. And now we're, we're toying with just making a quick kind of first game on RPG Maker and kind of seeing where we can take something like that. So, uh, yeah, we've been bouncing around right now. We, we have a few ideas of games we would love to work on and we'll get there. But we are just feeling out like the limitations of what we can do, um, areas where we can grow and learn. And then just like really what it takes from the bottom up, you know, to create everything from the assets to, you know, developing basically how the game operates, the physics, everything like that. Um, And messing around with 2D, eventually 3D maybe, um, all sorts of things. Yeah, it's been pretty fun. And there... There's not a ton of information out there online. There's You can find a ton of videos of like, hey, here's how you do character development or physics and whatever engine you're going to use. But there's not a ton of information out there on like, hey, here's how you build a game from the ground up, right? And so I've Googled, I've Googled quite a bit, searched, haven't found much. So if there are things out there, I, I just haven't found them. So yeah, it's really interesting. I think we're going to 
whatever we do, it's going to be fun. And I think it'd be really cool for us to document it and also let people know like, Hey, this is what we did. This is how you can do it. These are the engines that we used and it's going to be pretty fun. We've, we've wanted to do this for a long time. And Ryan actually wrote out a video game story like over a year and a half yeah. ago. Um, and it's so good that like, that's not going to be like a, a first project for us. That'll hopefully be like a long-term, uh, masterpiece. So it's good. It's exciting. It's fun. It's uh, about an asparagus it's who is <laughs> self-conscious about who has fallen. He has fallen. <laughs> he has fallen into a cup of vinegar, and uh, turns out it's really unhealthy for asparagus. So great uh, elf reference. There. That was awesome. Um, yeah, I. I, it. I, I <laughs> he he goes it. in on vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought we were talking about the other asparagus. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. the other short story. Yeah. For that's that's in the charcuterie board text message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sorry. Salami beets. Salami beets. Meat meatballs. Um, yeah, I, 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 I like this segment for, again, Bush League's going to have a little bit more segmented, uh, episodes. And I like this segment because just from hearing them in their journey, it's cool to hear like just the decisions that go into it. And I think if we can have this incrementally over years of just finding out where, where they're at mentally on it, even like, it was this a good week? Was this a bad week? Um, what are you excited about? And yeah, I think, you know, right now, like you said, it sounds like this, there's like somewhat of a crossroad of. All right, are you going to do RPG Maker? What engine are you going to use? What's your first game right now is really what it seems like the big question is. Yeah, and and it's still a question because we're learning a lot, which is great. I feel like it's not like we're wasting time. It's just as we learn more, we're like, maybe we should start here or maybe we should start here. Like Nick said, there's no one. There's not a lot of resources to tell you how to start because there's a thousand ways to start. Everyone has started different. Like we just had Kenny Leon for, you know, the for from Cellar Door Games and he Whose started recommendation in was not to make a game <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he started in flash and we yeah. just can't do that. So maybe our version of that is RPG maker, something simple to kind of, um, just get something going and then we'll dive more into the code side of things. And so yeah. we'll get there. We'll, we'll probably be covering this. Hopefully, um, as we do this segment, we'll be able to show some of our assets on screen and, um, some of the projects we've been working on. That would be super cool. Um, Nick and I have working 2D characters that can jump on platformers. Yeah. So that's that's been exciting. Uh, just to see something come to life that you made. Yeah. Um, that we hand drew outside and brought in. It's pretty cool. Right. Excited to see those assets. All right, guys. Let's get into some housekeeping. Housekeeping. <laughs> oh, wow. He tried to jump in on that. He's going to fight. He's going to fight milk you. <laughs> fight milk. All right. Fight milk your face. Upcoming, epi Ooh. <laughs> Upcoming episodes. Upcoming uh, episodes. Reviews. Sorry. We've talked about these before. Dress World Evolution 2 is in the, in the can. Um, we have an actual episode about video game uh, movies and TV shows. I actually have that cut that's ready to go. Um, that's probably coming out a week from the release of this. The Quarry is a game that, Nick, are you close to being done with The Quarry? I'm literally a night away from. Okay. Yeah. So we have a re review for that coming up. Um, Hollow Knight, Ryan's. We might not review Hollow Knight. I'm, Ryan might not finish it, but we might I'll talk about it. it. It's just an old game. We might do a mini episode where we do a, a, a couple small games. Maybe in anticipation. Maybe we'll we talk do... about it in anticipation for the Hollow Knight. Silk Song. That's Silk a good song. idea. Yeah, it's yeah. a good idea. Um, multiverses. I think we should do a full episode of Multiverses oh, as yeah, we play it as sure. it goes to full release in August. Yeah. I'm craving it right now. Yeah, I've been playing so I much. I want to go home and play it. Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga. We'll come back to it, I think. It's just on the back burner. Will we? Along with Horizon Forbidden West. Mm. Back burner, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Um, guys, check out that Multiverses Let's Play. Camille Neon. Shout out. Neon Signs. Chameleon.com. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to announce that was regarding upcoming projects that we're working on. Oh, we're going to be at Game On Expo in Phoenix. Um, that is August 9th. We'll be there August. Uh -oh, I'm, I'm blanking on the day. August 7th. 7th. The Sunday, August 7th. Yep. We'll be at Game On Expo. If you're in the Phoenix area, hit us up. We'll be there. Um, DM us, email us. We'll we'll come hang out. Come see us. Ryan will be wearing a really funny T-shirt. So if you can, Nick find will him, be wearing a kimono. Over. I will be wearing a gi. Don't commit to that. A gi. Oh, a gi. Yeah. Is that's not a kimono, right? That's a uh, no. A gi is like it's kind of, uh, what's the uh, it's like the same taekwondo. Thing. Same thing. Is it's it? like uh, did you no, buy a gi? The same thing. Yeah. You bought a kimono. It's like a rope. Yeah, 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 a gi yeah, yeah. is like what um, like Goku wears, like no, a fight suit. Yeah, jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah, jiu -jitsu. A fight suit. Fight suit. Fight suit. Are you doing jujitsu? It's a great studio. Yes, you are doing it. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, 
Thanks for hanging out with us this week. We'll see you next week. I love you. Bye.